No, 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 for my daughter. And uh, she'll be going and uh, drinking his, uh, his champagne and possibly playing top trumps with James Blunt in the dressing room afterwards. And uh, I've given her a photographic list of people to insult while she's there. Um, but no, I won't be going. I will be playing, uh, no doubt, to a far lesser crowd that night in a festival in Azerbaijan somewhere for half the fee and twice the stress. And no doubt I'll be reading about it in some newspaper and feeling slightly less legendary than I did that morning. How that story came to be was that I was bemoaning rock music or, uh, and how, why weren't rock bands selling out Wembley Stadium? And his name just happened to get thrown into it and I ended up on the cover of the magazine. Um, I'm, sometimes when I have this debate and I say I'm not into pop music, I think to myself, well, I know I am into pop music. We're all into pop music. Because we were brought up on, you know, from everything from Elvis to the Sex Pistols to Nirvana and the Smiths, which were all pop music. It's just that na na now the charts, for the first time in history, are completely dominated by major label acts who have teams of songwriters and employ major label thinking. And it all sounds the same. And my mum summed it up perfectly on Christmas Day. My mum is in her 70s and she's, a, she's from County Mayo in Ireland. And we would always sit and watch Top of the Pops on Christmas Day as everybody else did. And my mum sat there this year and halfway through she said, is this a repeat of last year's? And I said, what do you mean? She said, this all sounds the same as last year. And I thought, well, doesn't it? So, you know, take my mum's word for it, it's shit. I think that the major labels in the, in, in the 90s seen what was going on and they bought into it, right? And what they did was they attacked, you know, a, work, a guy who owns a record label who's a working class guy who's a fan of music, his Achilles heel is the fucking 20 million quid in the bank, you know, because he'd never forgive himself. And nobody's that cool to turn that amount of money down. So Alan McGee and Andy McDonald and various other people um, let their record labels go. And part of me thinks did the major labels buy into that to kill it, to, to stamp it out? Because, you know, um, for Nicky Wyatt is not good for the share price because he's got an opinion. You know, Richard Ashcroft is not good for the share price because he's got an opinion. Liam's not good for the share price because he's a fucking raving lunatic. So part of me thinks they were buying into it to stamp it out. And we could, like I say, we were all brought up on listening, not only to the Smiths, but the Smiths in the charts and in the top 10. And little did we know it in 1995, you know, when at any given point, there's like six great alternative bands in the top 10 at any given time, that that would be the end of it. It's a travesty, man, it really is. But it's all, it's all about the way of thinking, I think.